This is Discovering the Scriptures with Dr. Peter John Parises. Currently, we are in Daniel chapter 3, verse 4. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. Unquote. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now and ask that you would please help each one of us to obtain wisdom and knowledge from your scriptures as we study the word. Help us to meditate upon it and to remember it throughout the day. Help us to hear your Holy Spirit, our teacher. Teach us the scripture as it applies to our lives, as it applies to others. And help us to love you the most. And help us to love others more. And help us to love ourselves properly. Please. Now we give you a moment to speak with us and ask that you would do so. In Jesus' name I ask. Thank you. Now let's look at the scripture in context first, and then we will go into another version, the Young's Literal Translation, and continue on. Read in context the first paragraph of Daniel chapter 3. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an idol of gold, whose height was three score cubics, and the breadth thereof six cubics. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the coronet, flute, harp, sackbut, psalmstry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fierce furnace. Unquote. Now, reading Young's Little Translation, quote, And a crier is calling mightily. To you they are saying, O peoples, nations, and languages, unquote. I'm looking at different versions of the Bible and the translation, and I'm finding some discrepancies that I don't like. So now we're going to look at the actual literal translation from the Interlinear Bible. This is the raw translation. Quote, Peoples, it is commanded to you aloud, cried, and a herald, and languages, nations, unquote. Okay, now let's go ahead and parse this out from the Aramaic language which Daniel has started using in chapter 2 through chapter 7. Then a herald cried, so let's parse out cried. That is a PL stem, so casual, active participle, so basically you can put to be in front of it, continuing, cried aloud. It is, to you it is commanded, let's parse that out, PL stem, so casual, participle aspect, so you can basically put in to be in front of it, continuing on, O people, nations, and languages. Okay? And that's the parsing of this verse. Now I want you to notice that Daniel is relating what is going on here. Now, I'm going to read John Gill's commentary on this because it's pretty straightforward as far as what this verse means. Quote, 
Then a herald cried aloud, that its voice might be heard all over the plain, or if it should be thought that one was not sufficient to be heard throughout, which probably was the case, and where so great a number being assembled together, all could not hear one man. The singular may be put for the plural, and many being set in different places in the plain, and speaking in different languages, might proclaim when the image was dedicated as follows. To you it is commanded by the king's authority, O people, nations, and languages, the several kingdoms, states, and provinces that belong to the Babylonian monarch and spoke different languages as now represented by their several governors, officers, as the Armenians, Pythians, Medes, Persians, etc. Unquote. I decided to read John Gills because he brings out something that we're not going to actually think about when we're reading this verse. King Nebuchadnezzar has called all of his officials throughout his entire kingdom. There are several languages and cultures that are represented. Not all speak one universal language. Therefore, to help the communication be proper, he has set up people to give command to the people more than likely in their own language. He's not going to make them all speak Chaldean because probably they don't. They might, though, because remember, Daniel and his friends were put through three years uh, of eating the king's meat and drinking his wine and learning. So they might have something where they're commanded to learn the language and then go through the people. We are not given this. So is it one person giving out the command? Or is it several? We don't know. John Gill thinks that it's several and they're speaking in the uh, language that these people understand. And that is a strong possibility because King Nebuchadnezzar did conquer pretty rapidly. Or it might be one language and these were all brought in to be taught like the, the children of Judah, Daniel and his friends. We're not told here. So we can only think, daydream, suppose. We don't know. Is it important to this entire story of how this was done? The only way to find out is to stay tuned. May God wish to bless you as you go about your way studying the scriptures.